Oh my gosh. Come on! Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flader Mouse. Today we have another creation by that evil genius, Evan Perry, from Texas. And how can you tell if someone is from Texas? Don't worry, they'll mention it every chance they get. Now this slug consists of a steel, kind of a worm shafted gear, a jack screw. It's not an Acme thread. Anyway, Evan calls it the worm. I thought that would confuse viewers, so we're going to call it the steel tornado. And on the outside we have a rubber sleeve of some sort. Now one of my jobs is to figure out how to load something like this. So we're going to start out with an FS12 gas seal and stack six of these fiber wads on top of it. Hopefully that'll prevent the steel core from blasting through that wad upon firing. We'll use this green mech shot cup, uh, one of my favorite sabos for something like this. And that'll prevent any contact with the barrel and also bring it up to the proper size for engagement with the rifling. Now at 20 grams, this is a pretty lightweight slug. So we're going to need a fast burning powder and we're going to try some E3 this time. Now E3 can also be used in pistols. For example, in a 9mm, you use about 3 grains of E3. But in our case, we're going to use 20 grains of this E3 powder. Velocity should be around 1500 plus feet per second. Now how will these perform and will they be a stable flying projectile? We never know with Evan's stuff and often they come with a big surprise that we can never predict beforehand. Now we only have seven of these slugs to test so let's get out there and test them. Welcome back Taflator folks. OG and Jeff here with you today shooting another creation made by Evan Perry. You remember Evan, he sends us most of the stuff we shoot. And this one is called the Steel Tornado. It's a cool little piece of twisted uh, threaded bar stock. I think you guys are going to like it. We have a rifle to barrel we're going to shoot it out of today. Without further ado, I'm going to quit talking and we're going to get to it. Okay, we are 12 yards away, very, very close. Defense distance. Not bad. Wow. Really. Not in the vest, it hit near the uh, green circle. It's pretty digging, close. I went digging around in the Kevlar fibers. There is no steel bar in any of this. So I checked on the back of Brandon and we found what is a fresh new exit hole that wasn't there a minute ago. So wow. Maybe the, maybe on the high speed we'll see it come out the back or something. That thing sealed right that's off. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding, made it through. It's just a single panel, but level uh, 3A ballistic vest so yeah for usually of, it will it usually stops lead slugs yeah easily but for a piece of bar stock that was uh, punched all the way through this thing that's not bad all right let's take a look at the high-speed camera footage and try to evaluate what happened in this shot all right look closely here it all comes and you can see that we have separation of that rubber uh, sleeve from the main projectile but before we call it a failure, take a look at the steel core there. It kind of stabilizes out, hits nose first, very close to hitting the target that we drew on the shirt. And it passed all the way through that Kevlar body armor. And there you see it tumbling out the back. Just like many of his other designs, there's always a surprise. We never know what to expect, but that looked like a success to me, folks. You know what time it is? It's time to get the lead out. Oh, Lord. The world famous lead plate. Okay, there's a little green X on there, or, or a plus sign. Yeah, the recoil isn't bad at all. Okay, very accurate at 12 yards. Yep, and Jeff said that it was flying nose first all the way in. It sure looked like it. I'll have to, you know, analyze well, it when I get home, the high speed. It's possible that it hit and did a little pirouette and slammed it. Yeah, you had it on a pretty sharp angle there. Yeah, it was, it uh, was It was angled back quite a bit. It was about like that. So it probably did hit and then flipped up. That's what I assume, yeah. Either way, it is firmly embedded in there. There is virtually no bolts in the back, though. We couldn't tell. There's a bunch of holes back there. But you can see what that piece of... Uh, metal stock looks like yeah well let's see what actually happened again we have separation of that rubber sleeve from the steel core it said I don't need you no more and we had an even more stable flying core that time uh, very accurate no complaints here and again a big surprise 
People want to send me some oddball things, and this is one <laughs> of have, them. They have, uh, they have succeeded. A viewer named Sideshow, which you can tell right there because of his eyebrow tattoos, sent this uh, lifelike replica of Sarah Jessica Parker's face. <laughs> so uh, it's cool little foam thing. It's not going to blow up and explode, but I think it's pretty cool. We're going to mount it here on this water jug and at least get to see it flying in the air as we drive one of the uh, steel if, tornadoes. <clears throat> Yeah, if you can hit that X. Well, we'll get pretty close to it. That, I'm confident. Okay, Hydroshock, do your thing. Here we go. I'm ready. Nice. Wow. Actually sent that head to flying. Nice. Wow. And yet another awesome shot using Evan's Steel Tornado. Now, we've been so backlogged that it's taken us almost a year to finally shoot these slugs from Evan. And if you can take the time to rate the video, thumb it up, thumb it down, whatever, we appreciate it. It's like tipping, only free. Well, once again, we hit right next to the uh, green X, so pretty accurate. The little hole indicates that it was flying straight, true, that it wasn't tumbling, at least at the time it hit. And then Sarah Jessica Parker went flying up in the air in a perfect spiral and came back down undamaged. So she lives for another day. Yeah, I didn't want to just destroy that beautiful thing beautiful head. in one shot, you know? Right. I like... I. I imagine that thing was, how much, what do you think something like that costs? I wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> no. I've never shopped for a foam Sarah Jessica Parker mask, so it's not <laughs> even a mask, it's an actual solid head. But if you ever get head on a Saturday, you hold on to it and try not to uh, destroy it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, what's next? We're gonna try it, we've got three cell phones and a Garmin down there. The Garmin is the third from the left. So I'm gonna try to hit the Garmin and not hit the cell phones. That's a little target for such a uh, it is, but experimental round there. So far, I've been pretty confident with the accuracy of these things, so we'll, uh, we'll see uh, what we do. Maybe we're just getting cocky. I don't know. That's it, too. Here we go. Well, yeah. we got it. We have a whole lot going on here. You may want to re-watch it a couple times. But look at that stable flying core blasting through that Garwin whatever that thing is and the impact spun it around so hard it ejected the SD card right out of the bottom of it so far we've seen consistent separation of the rubber sleeve with that steel core and that usually indicates a, a failure but in this case the steel core is still flying straight true and relatively accurate it's it's yeah, amazing the, uh, it wasn't a phone was it no, no, it was a Garmin GPS. Oh, okay, so you didn't so, hit it. We actually knocked the directions right out of the back of it. And I didn't realize this, I guess, and probably should have examined it, but there's a little eight gigabyte uh, SD card went flying out the back that we were probably gonna reuse. Uh, yeah, I'll probably use it. Um, little piece of rubber, you guys have probably seen this in the slow motion by now before I have, but the little piece of rubber hose hit the front of this table, and look at the damage that did. I mean, if that was your thigh or something, yeah, that's that's. Ouch. I think that's more than like a beanbag round oh, or yeah. something like that. That thing was screaming. Yeah, it hit really hard there. We found it over there on the ground behind. And then of course the steel core off there on the safety road. Yeah. Somewhere. But we uh, we tried to avoid the other three phones and we made it right there in the middle and zapped. But you hit the table, dang it. With the rubber. Oh yeah, but and rubber so going at thousand miles an hour does a lot of damage. This is the important part right here. Look at all that. Well, wow, I can almost see the directions. To... Yeah, if you look in there close, you can still see how to get to the store. <laughs> well, we have this can of Vietnam era tomato sauce from Sunny Select. Is there a Vietnam era? Yes. Do you I, want to I shoot it like shoot it... that or on its end? Well, I was thinking like this, but Jeff, you just mentioned on its end. I think I can hit that right there. If we can keep it from rolling off. This is on a this is a, a thin little aluminum block <laughs> of some type. <laughs> So we're going to mount or it right aluminium here. if you're in Canada. That's right. This is still full of some old nasty tomato sauce. So let's go ahead and set it right there. Oh, the wind keeps blowing it off. I don't know. It'll you stay. You may not be able to figure it out. Oh, it'll stay. You watch this. Look at uh, that. Okay. Okay, super sniper shot. When you're ready. You think you'll hit it? I don't think you'll hit it, but if I say that, I'm usually wrong. So, okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Come on! <laughs> that was good! Amazing!
I got to say, that was a very surprising and impressive shot. It was only about half an inch high from hitting dead center at the distance of about 36 feet or the length of a school bus. And honestly, a lot of people would have difficulty hitting that with a factory slug, much less with a handmade, hand-loaded, iron sight shot, exotic slug like we're shooting today. Well, there it is, right next to the little green X. That's pretty close. And look at that uh, perfect circle. So you know that, that that little steel tornado was flying straight again. Yeah, and it and it wasn't. You didn't stay inside that rubber ring or rubber sabo, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Now people will ask. They always ask why this is pushed out because of that hydrostatic shock of that. Uh, Tomato sauce. They never ask that. Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. Like the, oh, that's going to be the back plate because it's pushed out. No, this one's pushed out too. That's the back. Wow. This one was obviously pushed out because that. Uh, Tomato cans are awesome. They are a great target. I think you originated yeah. that. Well, they're cheap. They explode a lot. They make a big mess. That. You Not really. There's all, almost nothing on the tail. Just a little well, splatter there. Vietnam era. Most of it was probably evaporated. Oh, okay. The wreckage that we're look, left with afterwards look a lot like a uh, exploration submarine. Oh, oh is too, that too soon? Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is next here? So this is some uh, drywall, uh, what do you call it? Mud? Drywall mud in a bag. We're going to shoot it before it totally squishes out of the bag because it is way... Uh, thinner consistency, let's say, than even clay. So it's more or less. People like, have been asking me to shoot this for years, but it's it's kind of expensive. Yeah, I just happen to have two boxes of this sitting in my garage that I need to get rid of. Home Depot wouldn't take it back because I took so long doing my bathroom. So <laughs> uh, we're going to shoot it up before it goos out everywhere and see what kind of mess we can make. Bag of mud. Bag of Isn't mud. it cheaper just to get fill up a bag with mud, with <laughs> yeah. real mud? Yeah. Okay. Ready, ready. ready when you are. Here we go. It came all the way back here. We got some splatter. We got some white splatter on us. Here we go. That's a good target. That's a good target. It splattered more than I thought. It uh, the round tumbled right. Yeah, that one was going sideways for some reason. It's weird. I think it's the only one we've had that's tumbled. I think so. And it splattered more than we ever expected. It splattered clear back. What we are 12 yards away. Yeah. So it splattered back and hit us. So when you. Mrs. OG, when you see it on me, I promise I wasn't at John Travolta's house. This is actual drywall mud. We're going to try and pour it back into another bag. Yeah, it's, uh, it's too need, good to not use again. We need an exercise in futility. Yeah. Let's try and jam that goo into another bag. Yep. On this shot, we had our first failure. But we got to have at least one failure in a video or something wrong. For whatever reason, we're just not able to get that projectile spinning enough. And if you're curious what these would look like shot out of a smoothbore, well, there you have it. That's what it would look like. We had no stability of the projectile. Accuracy was quite a bit off, but still a lot of energy dump and still fun target to shoot. Okay, I'm rolling. Here we go. For such an unusual 12 gauge projectile, the ballistic gel shot was actually very impressive. It looked like we hit it with a, a 308 hunting round. We had a temporary wound cavity that was pretty much the entire length of the gel block, 16 inches. And what's unusual about this shot is the rubber sleeve never separated from our steel core. Now in this one I used a leather wad instead of the six layers of uh, fiber wad. And that might have kept it together. But anyway, we were really happy with today's test. Uh, these things really exceeded our expectations and performed beautifully. Perfect shot. Pretty close to center over here. We put it right next to another previous hole. However, you can tell the one closest to me back here, away from you guys, is a big giant gnarly wound track. Yeah, that was very... You know where the black backdrop Viewers started like asking us to do that, and they got that from Tools and Target. He's like the new TN Outdoors 9. So anyway, we had a really good uh, wound track through there. Pretty nasty, it, it went right through. 
We found it in the vest over here. It buckled the vest, you can tell. But we found all of the components this And time. that one didn't come apart. Yeah, so that one was loaded inside. Yeah. Inside its little hose. We could probably unscrew that if we had uh, to. Just leave it like that. That's a good souvenir. Sure. Put that on a necklace. Yeah. Tell your wife you were in San Francisco. <laughs> But, um, but you can see the leather. You said you did this one with a leather. Yeah, that one uses a, a instead of the uh, paper or whatever it was, the uh, cardstock, overshot cards. You know, the six layers of it, mind you. And point out how it punched a hole. Yeah, I use a leather because of that uh, leather support wad. The G force. Well, the inertia it wants to drive that steel rod back in there. So the G force when you're, when you're, on your rod. Shoves it right through your yeah, right, now it's, right through your leather hole. You know, next time I'll use a penny or something behind it. Yeah, and then you will smash it out and can have a souvenir from San Francisco. Yeah, and, it, and it, there's the gas seal. It didn't blow out the gas seal, but it left a you know almost punched through it. That's how much force it is when you're applying all that force to that metal rod. The rubber doesn't really carry much of it. The heavy rod wants to be. Want, doesn't want to doesn't want to move, so it's. Yeah, but no, Evan's stuff. I mean, when Evan's stuff fails, it's entertaining. When Evan's stuff is successful, it's super entertaining. So yeah, we definitely thank Evan for sending over his uh, quality mad scientist home drilled uh, stuff. Yeah, check him out at uh, Hurri Rhinestone Hurricane, right? That's right. He's the Rhinestone Hurricane on YouTube, so you can go over and swing by. And I don't watch. know what that means, but it, that's oh, what this his was name is. Steel, steel tornado. What does that mean? He actually called these the worm slug, but I didn't think anyone would like. Who wants to watch a, the worm slug? The worm this slug. is you got to give it a. a it sounds like a, a manly name. It sounds like a, a bad guy on one of the Star Trek movies. <laughs> the worm slug needs to be phasered or something. Anyway, we're blabbered on enough. We've taken up enough of your time. YouTube's going to kick us off and pull the plug if we don't wrap it up. So we appreciate you guys stopping by, and we will see you on the next video. That's good. Worm slug. That's good pan work.